Yo, it's Marty VR, and today we're talking about the PSVR 2 and the Quest 3. So we have a PC VR comparison because the PSVR 2 PC adapter just came out. I finally got to test it and get some gameplay and stuff like that. And we got some things to talk about for this PC VR stuff. So over the weekend, I have been bombarded with all these questions on whether I should get a PSVR 2 for PC or I should get a Quest 3. I've seen a lot of opinions saying that one headset is definitively better than the other. And I think you guys don't realize a lot of this stuff is nuance based. It depends on the person. Some people may not like certain things about the Quest and others is about the PSVR 2 and that's totally fine. There's a multiple VR headsets for a reason so it can fit a lot of different people. We don't do fanboying on this channel. I have a lot of different VR headsets. I have a the Quest 1 through 3, Quest Pro, Valve Index, Big Screen Beyond, DPVR E4, which is uh, gifted. I have a lot of different VR headsets. So I do a lot of different things in my VR headsets. I've done standalone gaming. I've done PC VR gaming, I've done sim racing. I've done mixed reality. So I'm a pretty unbiased guy when it comes to stuff like this. And I kind of hold my channel in that regard. So if you ever come into this channel, you're gonna get an unbiased review on anything that I cover. And just for the people in the comment section who still kind of on the VR console war mentality, my community probably gonna roast you. I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's, it's gonna be bad. So if you type in a comment like that, you might wanna delete it. And go about your day. Actually, go ahead and write that comment because I kind of want to see what they're going to say. But first, let's get into the price of both of these headsets, which is kind of a big selling point depending on when and how you buy them. So for our price comparison, I'm going to use the base price and the lowest sale price of both headsets. So since the launch of the Quest 3, the price has been $500, with the lowest reported being $429 on July 8th. So $500 for that headset, like I said, isn't bad considering how powerful it is. But you know, we gotta talk about the price. Now the PSVR 2 is a little bit more expensive than the Quest 3 with it being $549 with the lowest price recently on sale being $350. So technically, if we're talking about both of these headsets on sale, $350 versus like $429, it's a pretty big difference. Now there is a caveat here because we don't even know if the PSVR 2 is gonna go on sale again. So not to end all be all in terms of price, but it has to be noted that if it actually does go on sale towards holiday season, it could be a pickup. Now that we got the price out of the way, let's talk about the specs for these two headsets. To talk about these specs, we're gonna to go to the old school method, which is the Mario VR chart of specs that I have. This chart pretty much has all of the specs of these different headsets that are relevant to this conversation. First, let's talk about resolution. The resolution for the Quest 3 absolutely stomps out the PSVR 2s, with the Quest 3s being 2064 by 2208, and the PSVR 2s being 2000 by 2040. So big jump in resolution when you go to the quest 3 versus the psvr 2. next is the lens type so the lens type does matter in conversation like this because it can be the difference between good colors matte colors glare all those other things it does have fresno lenses with an oled display so you kind of get those deeper richer colors for the psvr 2 but you also have something called mirror so mirror and persistence can be a really big thing on the PSVR 2, as a lot of you guys have probably noticed people complaining about it all the time. But <laughs> it's a pretty big thing when you're comparing clarity versus something that's not as clear. So the and so the Quest 3 has pancake style lenses with an LCD display. So that means you get a really sharp image and really good edge to edge clarity with those pancake lenses. Personally, for like the perfect VR headset, I love a mix of pancake micro OLED. But these two, you kind of get the best of both worlds in terms of LCD versus OLED and Pancake versus Fresno. In terms of eye tracking, both of these headsets are lacking. The PSVR 2 does have eye tracking, let me wrong, but it only works on the PS5 for some reason. Now, we don't know the reason yet. There's been kind of speculation about the type of eye tracking it uses not being licensed for PC, but I don't know if that's true or not, so I'm not going to it as a fact now in terms of foveated rendering both of these headsets apparently do have fixed foveated rendering so that's a good thing moving on to refresh rate refresh rate is very important for a vr headset now the quest 3 probably has the widest range i've ever seen so it has 72 hertz 80 hertz 90 hertz and 120 hertz so any type of pc you have that can run games at a certain refresh rate the quest 3 is very malleable in terms of getting your perfect refresh rate now, the PSVR 2 only has two settings for refresh rate, and that is 90 and 120 hertz, which isn't a bad thing. Personally, I don't think it really matters because most people with higher refresh rate, the better. So, eh, 
You can say that with a grain of salt. Now, what about tracking? So both of these headsets use inside out tracking. So no base stations or anything like that to be used here. It's mostly just the sensors on the front of the headset. Personally, I like lighthouse tracking, but lighthouse tracking can be expensive. So I totally understand why they chose inside out for both these headsets. And our last thing we're gonna talk about is FOV. So FOV has been like a hot thing for the PSVR 2 and Quest conversation. And the Quest has a 110 horizontal FOV with a 96 degrees vertical FOV. So keep that in mind. Now the PSVR 2 has an approximately 110 FOV. That I feel like is a lie. And here's why. The PSVR 2 versus the Quest 3, I feel like the PSVR 2 stomps the Quest out in terms of FOV. I've used both headsets a lot, but when I'm wearing that PSVR 2, I can legitimately see everything. It doesn't really have like that binocular kind of feel that the Quest 3 has. And I'm not sure why it's like that because the pancake lenses are really wide. So I don't understand that, but the PSVR 2 in terms of pure FOV and how close you can get to the lenses, it's, it's way more. I see way more with the PSVR 2. So that approximately 110 has to be approximately more than that 110 for sure. Even with glasses on in my headset, I can see more than I can see on my Quest 3. So take that as you will. So to sum this whole conversation though, for the Quest 3, you do get a sharper image with a lot of edge to edge clarity, but you do kind of get that glare that comes with the LCD display. For the PSVR 2, you get that wide FOV and those honestly better colors, but you have to deal with mirrors sometimes and that persistence. In terms of comfort, both of these headsets can be really uncomfortable base. Personally, I feel like the PSVR 2 is a lot more comfortable than the base Quest 3. The facial interface and the head strap, which is cloth by the way, I, I hate, if you've been on this channel for a while, you know that Mardu VR hates cloth straps for VR headsets. The base strap for the Quest 3 sucks. Ugh. And I must say the Quest 3's base cloth strap is terrible. It is the most uncomfortable cough strap I've used outside of the Quest 2. Most people just get like a bobo strap, which is really good. It can be a little pricey, but overall a decent head strap for a headset. Personally and lately, I've been using the sponsor of this here video, which is Globular Cluster. They've created the most comfortable VR head straps that I have ever used. I mean, I use it on my PSVR 2 and my Quest 3. You can even put an Anchor Nano Power Bank in the back and charge your Quest 3. What their comfort mods have in common is the cup design at the back and the top strap that makes the headsets infinitely more comfortable. A lot of people's issues with the PSVR 2 is that it was sliding off the back of their heads, which is very fair because it didn't come with a top strap in the beginning. Even for my Quest 3, they sent me these magnetic facial interfaces that are genius. I have never seen any other company have a magnetic facial interface, and I find it so cool. And the last thing I have to mention, you can replace any of the back pads of the headset with any of the ones they give you in the box, and they give you some really good and soft ones for any of your gaming experience. So to sum all this up, both of these headsets can be very uncomfortable out of the box. Personally, I feel like VR companies should prioritize comfort, especially if you want people to wear these all day, but you know, it is what it is. If you want to make your headset more comfortable, a lot of times you got to spend that cash. So either way, you got to spend money to make either one of these headsets infinitely more comfortable. But in my opinion, I do feel like the PSVR 2 is the more comfortable base headset. I just feel like Meta did not prioritize any comfort when they made the Quest 3. It honestly feels like Meta expected people to pay a lot of extra money from them to get comfort mods and stuff like that. But it is what it is. Outside of comfort, let's talk about what you guys are probably really here for, and that is the PC VR use. First, I'm gonna start off with the Quest. To use the Quest 3 on PC VR, you have four options. You can use the link cable, which is a plug-in option that I've used for a long time. You can use AirLink, which is probably my least favorite of all of them. Virtual Desktop, which I think is the best and then Steam Link, which is the newest streaming solution directly to Steam VR. All these solutions have their ups and downs with honestly, virtual desktop is being king, I'm sorry. It just has the best connection, the best customization, the best UI, it's the most steady. And honestly, I just feel like it's the, the king of Quest 3 PC VR streaming. Now, virtual desktop doesn't work for everybody, but I feel like Steam Link is a good alternative. And if those two don't work for you, you also have AirLink. <laughs> AirLink is serviceable. I don't like the UI. I really don't like much about it, but it does work. And Link Cable, like I mentioned before, is the plug-in solution. But at that point, you might as well just get a wired headset. 
personal. So to do this PC VR streaming, you have to have something called Wi-Fi 6. So most people have Wi-Fi 5, which is Wi-Fi 5 gigahertz. Wi-Fi 6 gigahertz basically means that data can be transferred at a faster pace. It doesn't mean that your download speed is higher or anything like that. It means the rate at which data can be transferred to your phone or any other device that's connected to the internet is a lot faster. Now, if you're like me and you're with AT&T, you actually have to pay them to upgrade your router to a Wi-Fi 6 router because they don't support routers from different companies like Asus or uh, um, any other other companies that make routers. Some people can switch out their router for another router with their same internet provider, but I'm not one of those people. But let's say hypothetically you're a person who is kind of on Wi-Fi 5 right now. Now, Wi-Fi 5 isn't unusable and it's pretty serviceable, but it can be really shaky. I'm not gonna lie. It can be really shaky compared to Wi-Fi 6. So for this example, I found one of the more cheaper kind of recommended Wi-Fi 6 routers, and that is the $90 Asus RT-AX55 router that I found like on Best Buy and stuff like that. To play your Quest 3 on PC VR, you also need a charger to keep it alive. The Quest 3 is the strongest Quest headset. And so that thing dies really fast. <laughs> like amazingly fast especially when playing pc vr because it's a lot more intense now now that you can stream it at a higher rate and with higher resolutions etc so you need to pay like 10 to 20 dollars maybe 30 dollars depending on how strong and how high capacity you want your charger to be now the charger i showed you guys earlier which is the anchor charger it can store 5,000 milliamps but honestly for a quest 3 you kind of want to up that number so hypothetically, if you add up everything I just told you, let's say you're starting from nothing, you got a Wi-Fi 5 router, you want Wi-Fi 6. That's $90 for that router, plus another 10 to $20. We're gonna say $20 just for this hypothetical. $20 for a power storage bank. So that's about $110 just to kind of get what I would call a low latency, low compression PC VR experience with a Quest 3. Now, there's a situation where you don't need any of that and you're just playing your Quest 3 till it dies or you're using some other on head strap solution that you may have bought, which is totally fine. And you let's say you already have a Wi-Fi 6 router just on happenstance. And you obviously save that money. And then it's just the base price versus whatever you pay for the head strap then you're good. But for my people who don't have either of those things, I kind of gave you a whole kind of estimate of what you probably will pay. Now let's talk about the PSVR 2 and the PC adapter for the PSVR 2. This PC adapter is $60. And for a lot of people to get the PSVR 2 PC adapter to work, you may need a Bluetooth dongle. Now, your onboard Bluetooth solution may work, but it might not be as steady as you want, or it just might not work. So a recommended Bluetooth dongle that is from PS Site is the TP-Link UB500 Bluetooth dongle, which is $12.79. So it's a really cheap dongle, but it is an extra price over what you're already paying, which is that 60. So right now we're already at $72, $73. You also may need an extension cable for that Bluetooth dongle to get it away from your PC because there can be interference with Bluetooth signals and stuff like that. So it's best to get a USB extender to get it out of the way. That also is about $13. So to total everything up, you're looking at about $85.69 just to get your PSVR 2 PC playable worst case, right? Now, in some cases, a lot of people save that money on spending extra for the Bluetooth dongle or the extension cable and just have to buy the PC adapter or already have a graphics card to where you can just plug it in using a virtual link adapter on certain GPUs and just play like that. But those people are lucky. There's a lot of people who are using NVIDIA, so you probably gonna have to buy a PC adapter. So why not just show you all these numbers and prices and whatnot? Basically, I wanna show you that PC VR ain't cheap, baby, I'm sorry. A lot of this stuff that you're getting into with both of these headsets can run up some money just to get a comfortable experience. A lot of people were saying that the PSVR 2's interest fee to the PC VR was overpriced. Personally, like I just showed you, it can be cheaper, hypothetically, than some of the other options on the Quest 3. As we go through this video, you'll notice I'm kind of dispelling a lot of the weird rumors I've been hearing, because it's just not true. As somebody who's involved in all these ecosystems, they all can be a little expensive, guys. It's just, gaming isn't cheap. Especially PC VR gaming, and especially VR gaming. Now that we got a lot of the nerdy stuff out of the way, let's talk about the PC VR gaming. Starting with the Quest 3. It is fun not having that wire when playing on the Quest 3. Being able to play, being able to do 360s and contractors or blade and sorcery is honestly just peak. Personally, as a PC VR first guy, I do hate the compression 
slash latency of streaming PC VR, but Virtual Desktop is an amazing piece of software that makes the experience so customizable. You can even make the colors more vivid in the option. You can also tune it to the point where you get to little to no latency or compression, but it takes some tinkering and you do need to have a good setup to make it work and you have to pay for virtual desktop. But I do have to give a shout out to Guy Golden because honestly, he just made something really great that even well, Meta can make. In terms of looking through the lenses though, the binocular overlap that happens with the Quest 3 can be a little bit distracting sometimes because that's why you're looking through binoculars. But the FOV is very wide with the Quest 3. It's nice. It's a really comfortable playing experience. I recommend it to like a lot of people. The battery life issue playing those PC VR games, like I said, can be annoying because it dies fast. That is so fast. But like I said earlier, that can be mitigated pretty easily. The MetaQuest did what a lot of VR companies wanted to do and provide a streaming option for PC VR. Even though Meta's focus is way past PC VR at this point, it's nice that they gave us options to even disconnect it to our PCs. And even with that said, you can also access the MetaQuest PC VR apps like Stormland, Lone Echo, and just a bunch of other different games that are very high quality and you should play them because I made a video a few weeks ago telling them you should play them. Next, let's talk about the PSVR 2 PC VR experience. PSVR 2 PC VR experience is highly immersive and is so impressive. The FOV with the PSVR 2 is undefeated by all my headsets and it makes me happy as someone who treasures FOV in a VR game. The OLED displays also add so much personality and emergence to the games with crazy vivid colors that it gives you. It blew my mind when I first tried it out because I've never seen a display look like that in PC VR. And I've had the Valve Index, I've had the E4, I've had the Quest, and it just was a new experience for me. The no latency that the PSVR 2 PC adapter gives you is so greatly appreciated as somebody that's tried both options. I feel like a lot of people have never tried a PC VR headset without having that wire. And it honestly shows in a lot of your comments because anybody has been on PC VR with or without a wire, they know the difference. Trust me. My biggest gripe right now with the PSVR 2 is the wonky controller tracking since it works through Bluetooth and your other peripherals that emit certain signals can conflict with the Bluetooth. So it can be pretty meh in terms of tracking on PC, but I think some people do have it set up right that it works perfectly all the time. And mine works a lot better now after some debugging. There's also the mirror that I mentioned earlier, but it's not so noticeable to me on PC VR, especially at that consistent 120 Hertz and using that stronger compute. So to sum it up, the PSVR 2 is not the perfect PC VR headset people are saying, but man, it is good. It's good, trust me. So which headset is better? And honestly, the answer is, I can't really tell you, but I can tell you which headset would be better for you. So I'm gonna go over a few use cases in which I think the PSVR 2 might be better for you or the Quest 3. First, we're gonna start with who would the Quest 3 be for? The Quest 3 is for people who want a higher clarity, higher resolution experience, I don't mind the latency and compression of PC VR gaming when streaming it. If you can handle all that, then the Quest 3 is for you. The Quest 3 is also people who have a phobia of wires. Some of you guys have a real true phobia of wires, and I vaguely get it, but I also don't get it. It truly is a solid pick, especially for what it offers outside of PC VR, which includes mixed reality, standalone games, and a lot of the knick-knacky things you can do on the Quest 3. I find the Quest 3 is people who really enjoy a supported headset and a headset that continues to grow over time. Now, who is the PSVR 2 for? The PSVR 2 is for people who want a higher FOV, no latency PC VR experience at an affordable price when on sale. In that 350 price range, the PSVR 2 is king. I personally don't see any headsets beating it at that price. I'm just being honest. 350 is really cheap for a PC VR headset. People really underestimate the difference between using a display port and streaming a VR game. I implore you guys to try a PC VR headset that directly plugs into a GPU, and the difference is honestly astonishing, and it's really hard to go back. Also, if you have an existing PS5, you can get access to those PSVR 2 games like Resident Evil 4, Grand Turismo 7, the best version of No Man's Sky VR, which is the PSVR 2 version, because you got foveated rendering and a bunch of other games that are just honestly better on PSVR 2 compared to Quest. So guys, there's no one size fits all here, especially for VR headsets. It really is what works in your situation. Some of you guys may not feel like spending that extra money on a router or spending extra money on a PC adapter or even having to deal with figuring out latency and compression and stuff like that or just really hate mirror and wires. So in conclusion, picking a VR headset is purely based on preference 
and none of these two headsets are trash or horrible like you guys are saying. They're amazing pieces of technology and as a VR vet, I'm just happy people are playing VR. That's what we should all be happy about. VR is being experienced by new people every day. And especially after the recent, really second launch of the PSVR 2, there's a lot more people playing PC VR, PSVR 2, and that's great. Because one day they might pick up a meta headset and then vice versa. So it's all a good thing that VR headsets are selling. I'm happy to see new faces and new people enjoying my niche, my favorite niche, and you guys should too. If you like this video, make sure you go like and subscribe and come back to more content from your boy. Make sure you go to the description below, go to VRR.com, get you some affordable prescription lenses for any VR headset, Quest 3, Big Screen Beyond, or any other headset, and use code MarioDoVR to get 10% off. Help me help you save some money. With that being said, it's been with MarioDoVR, and remember, I'm just a dude with a VR headset. Peace.